This factory located 100 kilometers away from Mumbai is one of the largest makers of galvanized steel in the country. The firm is partly owned by UK-based steel baron Lakshmi Mittal. It manufactures panels that are used for refrigerators and washing machines. But since 2008, low domestic demand has hit steel companies hard, forcing many to borrow huge debt to stay afloat, including this firm. Most steel factories have had to also cut down production capacity to get through the difficult period. There is a severe liquidity crisis in the market. Uh, my customers don't have working capital, so the ability to be able to buy on cash and sell on credit is very, very critical in today's circumstances. And that is uh, where a lot of steel producers in India are facing challenges is on working capital issues, not on the viability of the product, not on technical issues, but the fact that they don't have the working capital to run at 100%. But with India's economic growth estimated to touch 8% over the next two years, the steel industry is hoping for a turnaround. With India expecting an infrastructure boom, by 2017, growth in demand for steel here will outstrip China and the US. Now, on the face of it, that's great news for companies like this. But they may not benefit as much as you might expect, especially if Chinese firms can supply steel at a cheaper price and win a major chunk of the business. Between April 2013 and March 2014, India imported 5.7 million tons of steel. Japan topped the list of suppliers, with China in third place. But over the following 12 months, imports doubled and Chinese imports trebled, making it India's biggest supplier. With demand falling inside China, Steel makers are eyeing India's market in a big way. Chinese guys who actually export, uh, they, 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 they are happy with the break-even prices. Okay, so they don't mind uh, you know, uh, not having the profitability, but just to sell at the break-even prices. So that's what they are doing currently also. Uh, meanwhile, what also happened is that the coking coal and iron ore prices have been falling. So the cost of production also came down. That is actually helping them to sell it at even lower prices. The ban on iron ore mining in India at places like Goa and other states has meant that the cost of production is higher than in China. And this is making steel products here unviable. To address this issue, the government imposed an anti-dumping tariff on some Chinese products last month and it also increased the import duty by 2.5%. But the industry feels that these steps won't help. The 2%, 5%, all these so-called small percentages, uh, the exporting country absorbs or makes some kind of price adjustment because they have so much of surplus steel. The remedy lies in looking at the structure of pricing in India. You need to look at the excise levels, you need to look at how the steel is priced. Because if you actually look at the price of steel, a large chunk of uh, the cost of steel goes into the taxation. For now, India's steel firms are hoping that demand will rise significantly in the near future. That would help lift the gloom and initiate the recovery process. But for the industry to achieve sustainable growth in the long run is still a challenge.